So biological explorer. I mean, you've seen it. You've seen it do a bunch of things. And just as just so that there's you know kind of like a more clear picture of of what it does for us. I mean, it's our biopharma characterization tool. You've seen it uh, do stuff like take intact mass measurements and convert them into deconvoluted masses, right? Of 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 big monoclonal antibodies. You've also seen it take um, peptide mapping data um, and convert it into um, uh, peptide maps, um, you know, through to you know sequencing peptides and reassembling them according to the predicted sequence, and you know, identify modifications as well. The thing we're going to cover today is um, protein sequencing. So taking uh, proteins that have been fragmented by EAD and converting them into protein sequence maps. So we cover a suite and we're really going to focus on that last part, that sequencing portion. So um, I, I couldn't get through this without actually kind of addressing, you know, the, the terms top down and middle down sequencing. It's probably actually the first thing you heard about before you heard of protein sequencing, and they're they're very common terms. And you know, top down refers to sequencing of big monoclonal antibodies, um, you know, kind of directly. But it's not really done. It's not routine. Uh, it's much more common that these big maps are kind of cut into reproducible chunks, reproducibly sized chunks. And uh, this is this is the middle. These middle sized pieces. That kind of more easily get addressed by our mass spectrometry equipment. So fragmentation within our 7600, and you know we're focusing on EAD. You could equally do it with CID, but EAD has uh, tremendous benefits. Adr you know it can address much larger molecules than CID can. Um, through to you know kind of data to answer with with the BE software package, and the answer that you get is a protein sequence map. And I'll cover this um, kind of um, kind of top to bottom um, uh, in the next slide. But just to let you see that that it's the answer is a is a protein sequence um, that that we bring with us. Um, and the the answer is not so much the sequence itself, but our um, uh, annotation of the evidence that confirms that sequence. And that evidence is these blue and red symbols that you see throughout I don't see if I can find my mouse here. So these blue and red symbols are annotations of the evidence that the software has found um, that describe uh, the various uh, parts of the of the um, protein. So uh, this is what um, in answer uh, looks like coming out of BE and what it is it's it's actually it describes a relationship between um, the bond coverage map, which you see in this top corner, and the underlying MS, MS evidence that the mass spec measures. And so there's, there's three main parts. Um, there's, of course, the bond coverage map. I'll zoom in a little more tightly so you can see it again, right? Um, so if this is your first time seeing it, there's a lot of information being presented all at once. You see, first of all, your um, single letter amino acid code that describes the protein sequence um, to be confirmed, right? So this is the point. The point of this workflow is a confirmation workflow. Prove that we have what we think we have. The blue and the red symbols denote ion evidence that the software finds from the mass spec measurements. And uh, you see these little guide lines or guy lines, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and you see them for each row of the, the protein sequence. These are um, the um, ion fragment types that are um, that can be found and annotated within the software. Um, ABC ions for uh, ions from the from the N-terminus and XYZ fragments that result from C-terminus um, origins. And so you kind of see that um, um, ABC ions, you see them kind of build right from uh, the end terminus of the protein all the way through to about the middle. The last one's kind of on the big side, just under 150 amino acids in. And the C terminal fragments um, uh, kind of go in from the end towards the middle. So these red fragments build from uh, the end terminus. And this is, sorry, a C terminus, C1 would be here. Or I should say, you know, XYZ1 all the way through to the middle. 
Okay. So then the rest of this um, UI then um, uh, describes the relationship between this uh, bond coverage map of the protein through to the underlying MS2 evidence. So other parts that I'll that I'll focus focus on, on in the live demo is the the bond coverage summary, which also comes as a part of the UI. So the important part here is really this, you know, bond coverage percentage, you know, um, 70, 80, whatever percent you get, depending on your measurement. Where this is useful is when you start tuning your methods for the first time during acquisition, trying to pick the winner method. The last part to focus on is the the actual annotations of of real ion evidence, and so um, the the technology is based on recognition of these um, uh, isotopic patterns and labeling them with um, the ion type, um, you know, the peptide that that ion represents, and any modifications uh, that you're trying to confirm. 